We scored the second goal, the game is always open. The opponent, they don't really need anything. Just a long ball, a second ball, a set piece, and, uh, and two points out through the window. I think it's exactly what happened. I can't remember any shots from Sheffield in the second half till they scored the goal. And uh, unfortunately, we conceded. It was a really good goal. Um, and after we couldn't score the second one, but I think before that we completely dominated the game, had the best chances and we should have put the game to bed. Chris, you had the first 10 minutes, you certainly had the last 10 minutes, so based on that, is it a, a well-deserved point? I'm not so sure about that. Um, the, the, the middle bit didn't please me and I didn't enjoy that. I thought they started the game off, as you said, quite rightly, uh, spot on and, and we should take the lead and allowed the opposition to fold in the game. And last 10 minutes, as I said, come roaring back. Um, I believe we were, you know, before the game there was a result in it for us, uh, but I didn't believe that we would play as poorly as we did to, to get that result. But you keep popping up with the crucial goals. Yeah, hopefully they'll keep coming. Um, I'm not too used to this, this scoring goals every season, so I'll keep trying to go on the end of things and hopefully they'll, they'll keep going for me. Another great point on the road for Sheffield United, yeah. that's 16 points yeah. and um, refreshingly honest as ever, uh, Chris Wilder. Yeah. Um, as for Arsenal, um, Aubameyang of course was suspended in, gave a chance to uh, Martinelli, yeah. um, he scored. What did you make of his performance? Yeah, he played well as well. Um, he's somebody that the Arsenal fans are very excited about because he's got his eight goals but none in the Premier League, he got his goal today but he's somebody that is constantly trying to, to get in the box. He's got a great movement. Here I think maybe a diving header. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a good cross from Pepe, who himself had a, a really good game today. But when you look at him, he's, he's sharp, he, he's trying to get in the box, he makes good darts into the box. You know, it's what, maybe in the future he could just hold that, maybe lay it into Pepe. But this is his goal. Look at him, he's getting himself in a position where he's in the middle of the goal, and then look at him now. And he gets a tap in. I think that he's under a lot of pressure because of Aubameyang not being, um, yeah. not being available. Um, everybody's saying, oh, he's got to come in. Can he, can, he, uh, can he fill the boots for the game? And I think he did. You know, he, he, he was full of running. Um, it was great movement. And him, again, as, and Ainsley Maitland-Niles, I think Saka as well, really played well. Mustafi's got to get a mention. But, yeah, still a work in progress. But I was really delighted for him yeah, today. And um, he's in good company there with the teenage hot shots in the top five leagues around Europe. Now, VAR, we've been very kind to them so far. Um, did they miss one? Pepe I think so. penalty was yeah. it looked a blatant yeah. foul, he, didn't it? He goes up against uh, O'Connell there and he flicks his <laughs> his leg out there and his knee catches him and he goes over and I, I think that's a penalty, yeah. yeah. Ian? He knocks it past then to <laughs> Stevens. What did you what Should have been a pen. Oh, if only you had VAR, they'd be able to have a look at that. It was a pen. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot believe they've not given that pen. <laughs> but they didn't. Uh, Liverpool versus Manchester United is the headline act on Match of the Day 2. Well, unless you're a Leicester fan. <laughs> you have been the most fantastic experience of my life. Thank you. Liverpool absolutely ruthless. Simply awesome. Alexander-Arnold, it's a Vicarage Road, where it ended goalless between Nigel Pearson's Watford and Jose Mourinho's Tottenham Hotspur. There were also draws at the Emirates, the Amex and the Etihad, where the champions Manchester City drew 2 all with Crystal Palace. Bottom of the table, Norwich got a vital three points to pile the pressure on Eddie Howe's Bournemouth, who remained 19th. Wolves came from two goals down to win against informed Southampton. It was one all at the London Stadium as David Moyes West Ham claimed a point against one of his former sides, Everton. And Newcastle grabbed a late victory over Chelsea at St James's Park thanks to Isaac Hayden's header. Well, I'm joined in the studio by Michael Owen and Mario Melchiot. And Chris, you had the first 10 minutes. You certainly had the last 10 minutes. So based on that, is it a, a well-deserved point? I'm not so sure about that. Um, the, the, the middle bit didn't please me and I didn't enjoy that. We've had to work extremely hard as a staff, changing shapes about three or four times. Uh, the players were off it in that period. I thought they started the game off, as you said, quite rightly, uh, spot on and, and we should take the lead and allowed the opposition to fold in the game. And um, when you keep, keep saying it, it's quite a common one that, that, we, that we all say. We keep giving the ball away. You give good players opportunities to hurt you and they, and they did. They didn't find the second through maybe, I should imagine from their point of view, uh, not killing us off and, and, and some last minute, def last ditch defending. But certainly, you know, as soon as we, we, we got an equaliser, I thought there was only one team that looked like, looked like winning it. And, uh, but it wouldn't have been deserved. 
Mikel, an opportunity to get three points, which has, has disappeared for your team late on at, at home again. Um, I'm sure you're desperately disappointed. Why do you think the three points slipped out of your grasp? Because this league is like this. Uh, if you don't score the second goal, the game is always open. The opponent, they don't really need anything. Just a long ball, a second ball, a set piece, and, uh, and two points out through the window. I think it's exactly what happened. I can't remember any shots from Sheffield in the second half till they scored the goal. And uh, unfortunately, we conceded. It was a really good goal. Um, and after we couldn't score the second one, but I think before that we completely dominated the game, had the best chances and we should have put the game to bed. Do you feel it is a, another learning curve for your team? Yeah, but sometimes to learn from a long ball, second ball, and from this angle someone's put it in the top bin is a difficult learning uh, thing, you know. Uh, it's part of football. And uh, we have to accept that I'm very disappointed, obviously, with the result. But, uh, but as well, I think the performance was at the level that uh, is required and, and we deserve more and we didn't get them. I think many people, when Arteta came in as Arsenal manager, they questioned whether he'd be able to handle it because he's not managed a club in his own right before. What do you think of the job he's done so far? Well, there's no question it's going to be a long job. I mean, nobody thought this was going to be easy. I said... You know, when he took over, it's probably the hardest job in the Premier League at the moment because where the expectation is and how far they've slipped over the last 10 or 15 years since the, you know, heady days of Arsene Wenger and, and that great team. So it's a tough job. Um, it's going to take a while, but I do think he's capable. I think it's going to be a, you know, a good match, let's say. Um, you can already see signs of, of change. Um, you know... Talk about learning curves there. Mm -hmm. He's already learnt the, the English language and <laughs> slang and everything else, talking yeah. about the ball going in the top bin and things like that. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's good to see. But no, he's got... You know, nobody expects them to get into the top four. So he's got a bit of time to work. But you do need to see progression because this mm -hmm. is a huge team, a huge club, and they should be in those top four places. Well, one thing I think that nobody expected was to be sat here today saying that Sheffield United are four points above Arsenal in the Premier League <laughs> table. Chris Wilder has done an outstanding job. You know, look, you know, the, the joy of this team is that um, you have a manager that has a system in his head and he doesn't shift from it. No matter what has been thrown at him, he sticks to his task. And I think those are the managers that I, I enjoy because he definitely has his philosophy. He knew how he wanted to play. And he plays football in a way that some of the teams that come up would never even try. You understand? He plays a highly risky game and a lot of teams, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are other teams that have tried, but they couldn't master it. And I think he clearly did. And that's why his team is where they are. And I think he's also very smart the way he goes about it. And clearly we talked about a game before that, you know, last minute or last couple of seconds to, to stay alive and stay believing in, in the game. And he clearly did that. Well, you talked earlier about Wolves being everybody's second favourite team. What about <laughs> Sheffield United? Yeah. They Third favourite? They run them close. <laughs> They're doing it in such a good way yeah. that you can't help but really be, uh, be enthralled to enjoy watching their, their game. And Chris Wilder's so honest as well in his uh, post-match interviews. He's a breath of fresh air. He did another match that happened earlier on today. And uh, Martinelli here, he, he tries a shot, but it's wide. Yeah, I mean, Sheffield United have been absolutely brilliant, haven't they, this season? One of the uh, highlights of of the, the season so far. As you say, Martinelli, he's a goal scorer. You expect him to, to score whenever he gets in front of the goal and he missed then, but he didn't miss on the second opportunity. It was a very good goal. Um, yeah, he's only a couple of yards out, but you've got to be in those positions. And just like we saw Aguero a minute ago getting in those danger areas, he was in there and he'll continue to score a lot of goals. Have you seen a significant difference from Arsenal under the new manager? Yeah. Um, you, you, their objective and what they want to do is really clear. I mean, you see this clearance just from Jaka, but they have a clear objective and they know exactly what they want to do. He's also very calm and I think he brought a lot of calmness to this team, what they actually needed. Okay, this is a penalty moment. For me, this is a clear penalty. He checks back inside and I, it's so interesting that the referee just keeps on going. Look, he goes beyond him, checks inside on his left and the lag... He, you cannot, like, what do you want him to do there? That's the question I ask you. I ask him. He is not like he's looking to go down. No, he clipped him on his knee. You're going to go down, so give the penalty. Yeah, penalty for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> but Sheffield United, like they, don't know, they don't know when to, to uh, lie down, do they? Fleck here, he's been a very good player this season. Really been impressed with him. I think it takes a little deflection or something on the way through, but certainly his goal and... Wow, what a moment that is to celebrate 
at the Emirates in front of your fans. You see a slight deflection there, but this is what it's all about for those Sheffield United players coming up from the Championship and playing in these t type of games. They relish the opportunity to play the big clubs and they are loving every moment of this Premier League season and so is their manager. Here's Chris Wilder.